Now, 282 persons with disabilities, including 90 former toll booth operators, have been recruited by the Youth Employment Agency in a bid to keep the high unemployment rate among people in that category. In an interaction with the press, the agency CEO, Kofi Ajapon, touted the feat as unprecedented. He urged other state and private agencies to create employment avenues for persons with disabilities, most of whom have limited job opportunities. The Youth Employment Agency has successfully recruited 282 persons with disabilities possessing at least a senior high school qualification. And I repeat, it brings me joy, immense joy, to announce to the people of Ghana through your esteemed platforms that the Youth Employment Agency has successfully recruited 282 persons with disabilities possessing at least a senior high school qualification. These individuals have been appointed as staff members of our, of our agency. These individuals have been appointed as staff members of our agency, with those holding diploma or higher qualifications assuming roles as regional disability desk officers. And those with senior high school qualifications appointed, appointed as district disability desk officers across all 16 regions and 266 operational districts respectively. Ladies and gentlemen, this employment affords them not only a sense of pride and financial stability, but also positions of influence where they can contribute meaningfully to policy formulation and implementation concerning disability rights. Furthermore, the agency is committed to ensuring the social security and welfare of these employees including the payment of relevant statutory contributions. They will enjoy the same economic benefits and privileges as any other government employee, ensuring their financial stability and security. And I repeat, the agency is committed to ensuring the social security and welfare of these employees including payment of relevant statutory contributions. They will enjoy the same economic benefits and privileges as any other government employee, ensuring their financial security and stability. Members of the media, in addressing the needs of individuals without basic qualifications, the Youth Employment Agency has developed other alternative pathways through our programs such as the Business and Employment Assistance Program, Youth in Skills Training, and our Garment and Textile Training Initiatives under the Garment and Textile Model. Now, the electricity company of Ghana, ECG, has advised clients to only transact business with the power distribution company through its power app. And officers speaking to join News, the Volta Regional General Manager of ECG, Christina Jato Kalio, explained the outfit does not operate a mobile money account and entreated customers not to give audience to people who would ask them to send money to ECG mobile money or bank accounts to access services. These people, what they do is that they call on customers, tell them services that you require from ECG, it is time for you to make some payments. They will give you some fake ECG account number, ECG Momo number, and quickly they will come back and tell you the account number is not working, so you have to pay through the Momo. They will give you the, the number and a name on the number. Truly when you dial the number, that so-called name will pop up, and the person is either designated as a manager a secretary, uh, an engineer, or a technician who will be receiving this money in the name of ECG. Please don't fall prey to such activities. 
I repeat again, ECG does not have any designated Momo account number that we give out to customers to pay money into. Download the Power app or use the short code, which is star 226 hash. Anytime you need to pay any money to ECG, you pay your receipt is generated electronically. Or better still, if you are not comfortable with these things, visit an ECG office nearest to you. Don't deal with middlemen. That is how you get defrauded. Just recently, I think last week, one government institution was contacted for the GRA Customs Training School here in the Volta region. They sent them a fake press release. I think they got it somewhere from the net, cloned it somehow to look like it is directed to the Customs Training School, asking them to pay these monies. But they were quite alert and they reported to ECG. So we have taken those numbers, submitted them to the security agencies to investigate and let's get down to those people who are doing it. But what we do is that when you are defrauded or you, these people come into contact with you, kindly note the number. You can report straight to a police station or to the tele, uh, mobile service provider or come to ECG office. We will take this number. We submit it to the security agencies. We are dealing with them, trying to crack down on these people who are using fake numbers, fake identities, impersonating ECG personnel to defraud Ghanaians who want to do genuine business with ECG. Now, resident along a storm drain at Asylum Down in Accra are lamenting its blockage by plastic waste. They say the situation is leaving them at the risk of having to face floods with the slightest downpour, and they want the authorities to quickly address the situation. Join us is Eli Kemp, they visited the community, and here's his report, read to you. In Accra, floods have been a major headache for years. This has led to the loss of lives and many properties. Residents of Asalam Down have expressed worry over how the drains get clogged with plastic garbage and other materials. They want the relevant authorities to fix the situation to avert flooding when it rains. I mean, this is not a gutter, it's a drain. If it chokes, it affects the environment, it affects the lives of the people, depleting the, I mean, the area. So when there's flood, it will go into homes of the people around and we will also call environmental and not more people to come and clean the place and it's all all waste wastage of money to the to the economy and to the government the, the government should be i mean astute in their working or in in their operation because as it gets flood as it gets build up it will flood and it will cause um, the environmental hazard to the people living in that area. Yeah, I've been working over here for almost 15 years now. I've been crossing this place all the time. But sometimes if you rain, well, if you see here, yeah, it's very, <laughs> it's not a palatable. You know, no, the gutter, because of the rubbish. Mm. Yeah. If, you, if you uh, assume that maybe you are not here for a long time. Maybe when it's raining, you pass here. I mean, you are afraid in this gutter, uh, uh, the bridge over here too is collapsing. Uh, 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 How long has the rubbish been here? You have been here for. Oh, we've been here for a long time. I've been here for a long time. No one has come to clean it. Nothing. Nothing. No. Maybe they don't have the community people who are be taking care of this place as well. So uh, those authorities they should come or. To organize the guys so they will come and be clean each other every weekend or every two weeks. So we are begging, we are begging the big men to come and help us to do this gutter for us because we are suffering. Here. How long has it been here? How, how long? I mean, how long has this run? How, how long has the run? Oh, been here? oh, almost. If you are not lying, almost uh, more of that time, almost three years. Yes. So hasn't it been affecting you guys? Like hasn't it been uh, every 
rainfall is worthless. Sometimes that's inside our room, spread things. Flat. So flat. So we are begging them to come and help us to do this gutter. Because okay. we are suffering. Okay. It's where it will, it will help. When the fact that it's getting flooded, you see, you could see a lot of, I mean, garbage in it because it's not covered. People throw garbage in it. People uh, defic uh, defecate in it. And apart from that also, it breeds mosquitoes. You know, the cost of health is very expensive. And mosquitoes all over this area. And apart from that, it smells too. We are talking about, I mean, making Ghana a tourist attraction. And when tourists come and see this kind of gutter over here, looking at the field inside, it doesn't speak well, it doesn't add up to our country. It is, it is, it is not nice, you know. So the government should come to us. Every time it rains and get this year get flooded, they will come and tell us stories. Oh, we are coming next week, we are coming, the we are coming. When it's elections time, they will bring their machines, come and do small work, and then after election, that's all. And I've been so since the time I, I've been here. You get me? Uh, so I travel, come back. Whenever I come, the same thing. Just last two, some people came over that they are coming to do. I've gotten some fund from World Bank. And uh, they even got the fund around 2015. And 2015 up to now, still the gutter has not been done. So I wonder why the fund is there. And for the past no less than eight to nine years, they've not done it. You get me? It's really a worry to all of us. Elikem Day's report read to you.